Welcome, I'm Jordia Benjamin, Merkin Senior Coordinator of Programs and Audience Engagement at Colby College Museum of Art in Waterville, Maine. This is Artful Healing. Artful Healing is a part of the museum's wellness initiative under the larger program, Let Art Inspire. Our theme for the month has been Time to Flow, inspired by the work of Maya Lin, Pin River Kissimmee, 2008. We have looked at this work of art through the lens of yoga, meditation, and finally, we're here today with healing. Now, before we begin the activity portion of this program, let's first take a closer look at this work. Maya Lin is a world-renowned artist, designer, and environmentalist. Born in 1959 in Athens, Ohio, Lin grew up around a university as her father was a ceramicist and the dean of the College of Fine Arts at Ohio University. Her mother is currently a poet and was a literature professor. Lynn is best known as the designer of the Vietnam Veterans Memorial in Washington, D.C., in which she won during her graduate pursuit at Yale University. Since then, Lynn has designed many other memorials across the country. These memory works, as Lynn calls them, include the Civil Rights Memorial in Alabama, the Women's Table at Yale University, the Confluence Project along the Columbia River in the Pacific Northwest, and finally, her last memorial, the What is Missing Project. Alongside these memory works, Lynn has been invested in environmental issues from a young age. She attributes this interest to being a child growing up in the Appalachian region during the 1960s and 70s, the era of the Clean Air Act and the Clean Water Act. Water, in particular, has featured predominantly in Lynn's work. One of Lynn's works, currently on view at the Kobe College Museum of Art, and is this month's inspirational artwork, is the Pin River Kissimmee 2008. It's composed of hundreds of stainless steel pins and represents the Kissimmee River system in Florida. The Kissimmee River is one of the most environmentally challenged waterways in this country. Before the European settlers set foot in Florida, the Kissimmee Valley region of Central Florida was inhabited by a Native American tribe called the Hororo. The name Kissimmee can be tracked back to the language of the Hororo people and means long water. There were approximately 350,000 indigenous people living in Florida when the Spanish arrived in 1513. In the centuries to follow, war, disease, oppression, and slavery reduced the native Floridian population to virtually nothing. Like most Floridian tribes, the Hororo lived exclusively by lakes or rivers. Water travel was heavily depended on and were hunter-fisher gatherers, as their land was very wet, full of lakes, and frequent to flooding. The Kissimmee River Restoration Project stated that the Kissimmee River prior to 1962 ran 103 miles from Lake Kissimmee to Lake Okeechobee, creating a snake-like distance between the lakes. In 1948, the U.S. Congress authorized the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers to construct the Central and South Florida Project, which led to engineering changes to deepen, straighten, and widen the waterway that effectively shortened the river system almost by half. The project, while it seemed like an excellent idea at the time, was highly criticized by biologists due to the believed impact it would have on the ecosystem. In the progress, 
They controlled the flow of water, but the surrounding floodplains dried up. And this was devastating for the ecosystem that thrived there. In Lynn's work, the subtle environmental message is underscored by the slightly exaggerated forward swelling of the pins at the multiple dam sites on the river. After decades, the Kissimmee River is being restored to its original state, returning 44 miles of the river's historical channel and restored about 40 square miles of river floodplain ecosystem. As Lynn has said, it's really hard to understand a river. Throughout her work, she has tried to reveal aspects of the natural world that you may not be thinking about. Lynn also makes connections between masculine and feminine attributes to water, seeing water itself as the domain of women, stating, we wash laundry, we bathe ourselves and our children, and in many cultures, we are responsible for finding and hauling water. Pin River Kiss Me, like other water artworks by Lynn, can be seen as a feminist statement. Furthermore, Pin River Kiss Me also calls out to indigenous cultures who once and currently solely depend on the river as a source of life. Now, I will turn it over to our partner, Bodhi Simpson, an art therapist and artist who will lead us in this program. Hello everyone, welcome to Artful Healing. My name is Bodhi Simpson and I'm a registered art therapist. As an art therapist, my role is to assist people in learning how to express themselves in creative ways and how to build a relationship to what they've created and learn new ways of being in the world so that they can ultimately learn how to facilitate their own healing. For our time together today, I'm gonna to be teaching you a creative exercise to enter into and experience and explore the flow state using the creative process. And through this experience, we're gonna be learning how to open and how to surrender more naturally to life's ebbs and flows. As you build more experience with the flow state, you're gonna to start to be able to notice where in your life you're feeling blocked, where you feel you're forcing things or really feeling that need to control so that you can once you're aware of that, you can really soften into your experience and really enter back into the flow of your, of your natural life. And actually learning how to experience the flow state is very important for your emotional well-being. The flow state is any time that we are fully immersed in the present moment. And you have experienced this any time you're doing something pleasurable where you lose sense of time or you know nothing else seems to matter in that moment and sometimes you even lose sense of yourself. Using creativity and art materials in particular, it is um, a natural doorway to the flow state experience because we can become fully present to the materials and to what we're creating, to the place where we do forget kind of how much time has passed. And we may find quite a bit of enjoyment just being playful and really letting go of the need to create a product. So for today's experience, it's really important that we um, learn how to open up to our, our sense of curiosity, our sense of wonder and playfulness. We're not going to be ending with a finished product today. It's simply uh, a playful exploration to really open up to the experience of the flow state. And today's experience is not intended to be therapy. So if you have Anything that comes up that's in need of deeper healing, please seek the support of a therapist, a family member, a partner, or a friend that you trust. And because this is recorded, we're able to um, have the ability to pause at any time. So pause the video when you're creating if you need enough time to really enter into this process for yourself, because the time that I give you may feel a little bit restricting. And with flow state, we really wanna have the sense that we have plenty of time to really open and grow the muscle of, of what this experience feels like. As we get ready to prepare, I would like you to really make sure you find a safe space in your home to do this work. So this will be a space where you can be uninterrupted for at least 30 minutes. It may be a sanctuary or space that you create for yourself intentionally to do these creative meditation exercises each month. And you may choose to have 
a comfy blanket, maybe some tea. Sometimes people, if they're adults, enjoy lighting a candle or burning some incense, but really a space that when you enter in, that you feel safe to explore, to get curious about the truth and um, without fear of judgment. And during this process, also just noticing any judgment or resistance that comes from yourself. And if you notice that, just breathing into that and maybe bringing a little bit of compassion to that part of yourself that has felt the need to judge yourself. For today's experience, I'm also gonna recommend the possibility of playing some music while you're creating. So just as art is a natural doorway to opening to the flow state, many of you probably already know that music really allows us to enter into a flow state as well. But what I'd like you to do is really be mindful about the music that you're choosing today because you know you can just assume that a classical playlist, for instance, would be really peaceful and flowing. But the truth is a lot of classical music can also be kind of upbeat and stressful and, and have kind of crunchy chords. So I just really invite you to really explore mindfully what kind of music would help you enter into a peaceful flow state. And if you're not really sure, what I'm recommending for today is River Flows in You by Yuruma. There's a nice hour-long playlist on YouTube. You could you could check that out. Um, or any music by Yuruma really seems to be very flowing and doesn't have any lyrics. Um, and that's just another thing to think about in choosing your flowing music because often words kind of plant thoughts in our mind. And what we're really looking for with flow state is that really clear mind experience where you're completely immersed in the present moment. So... Today's recommended materials today are, of course, a device to play your playlist on and some paper and a pencil to do some writing. I'm also recommending, if you have it, 11 by 14 watercolor paper. If you don't have the larger watercolor paper, it could also work to have several smaller pieces of watercolor paper. So we just want enough space so that as you're engaging in this practice, you can really spread out on your page or spread out to multiple pages if needed. And of course, a cup full of water. I'm recommending for today a larger paintbrush. That way, if you have it, that way you can really just be flowing with the movements on the page. And for today, I'm using uh, some cakes, some real basic cakes for watercolors, but you use what you have. You might have some liquid watercolors or little tubes. Um, you may also have other materials that you want to use. So just be thinking about what's pleasurable to you and that will help you facilitate flow experience. But if you're really interested in, in joining us today to play with watercolors for flow, just, just notice what you have or purchase the materials if you want to try it out. It doesn't have to be really expensive materials. And to take it to the next level, if you have watercolor pencils or watercolor crayons, and you know a lot of us have these and they've just been kind of sitting around, Get them out because these can add another layer of enjoyment to our process today. Okay, so as we are getting ready to step into the process, what I'd like you to do now is get out your paper and your writing utensil. <sighs> Just take a deep breath in, a deep breath out. And we're going to give our minds a job for a moment. So what I'd like you to do is just allow yourself some space to do some free flow writing around the theme of flow. So I'd like you to write about what things in your life have you done where you have lost track of time and what things have brought you pleasure and enjoyment and excitement. And I'd also like you to consider where in your life you've needed to force or control, where you felt blocked, you know, noticing lately Where, what your relationship is to the theme of flow. So it's really important to get curious about this as we began, because the biggest healing piece in our creations can just be our increased awareness that comes from the process as well. So I'm just gonna give you a few moments and just invite you to write freely until you realize you've really captured a sense of, of what your awareness is around the theme of flow and you just feel the energy flowing.
So this would be a nice moment if you need a, a nice significant amount of time to pause the video and engage in your writing. And when you're ready, you're gonna place your writing material and your paper aside. And I'm gonna invite you to get out your paper, your watercolor paper, your water, your watercolors, brush, your watercolor pencils or crayons. Get your music playlist ready. We're not gonna play it quite yet. And I'm just gonna guide you in a brief visualization. So we've had some time to connect to our thinking mind. And now I'd like you to, to sink more into your body as we immerse ourselves in this experience. So if you feel comfortable, you might consider closing your eyes, get comfy on your chair, put both your feet on the floor. If you don't feel comfortable closing your eyes, maybe just uh, softening your gaze, looking down toward the floor. And when you're ready, you're gonna take a deep breath in till it almost hurts to breathe any deeper and hold it. As you breathe out, breathe down through your body, down through your feet and down into the earth. Just starting to feel a little bit heavier in your body. And today, as we step into our exploration of flow, we bring in the element of water. I'd like you to go up into your mind's eye and just take a moment and imagine the qualities of water. You may be seeing water, you may be imagining what the qualities feel like for you. But just breathing into the water. And as we connect to the element of water, we remember that water flows, it doesn't resist. Water is fluid and it goes where it wants to go. We're actually very connected to water. More than 70% of the Earth's surface is covered in water and a large percentage of our bodies are made up of water. So the truth is that we are water. It is our natural state of being to be in flow. It's simply our minds and our society and how we've been trained to be in the world that have taught us that we need to force something or control things. Really the sense of force or needing to control is what causes us suffering. So as we breathe into the element of water, I'd just like to invite you to feel yourself as the water. And really connecting to the fact that water is life And water symbolizes the natural flows of nature. Today, we're also bringing in the metaphor of the river. Rivers move forward. And at the same time, they seem to remain the same. We could invite the metaphor of the river to represent the flow of our own lives. So I'd like to invite you to take a moment and contemplate in your own life. Do you feel you've been flowing upstream? Or do you feel you've been flowing downstream? Have you been moving forward with the current? Or have you been fighting against the current? Are you energized or are you exhausted? And also take a moment and just question, you know, how you, have you known how to be in flow in your life? Is the experience of being in flow comfortable? Or does it feel uncomfortable and foreign and maybe even scary? 
So if you feel any resistance, just breathe into that and open yourself to the gentle pull of the water guiding you. And just imagine allowing the flow of the water to nurture you and caress you and nourish you as you allow the water to carry you forward. You allow it to cleanse you and wash away your need to control or force things any longer. As you breathe, you're inviting the qualities of the water and the river to wash away any heavy emotions that no longer serve you moving forward. And for our time together today, for this brief moment in your life, we invite the experience of flowing forward and fully opening to present moment, moment awareness. And when you're ready, I invite you to open your eyes, maybe take another deep breath in, maybe just rubbing your legs, kind of rubbing your arms, maybe gently caressing your cheeks, making sure you're fully present and grounded in this moment. As we're creating today, we want to hold this frequency. We want to hold this experience of being in the flow that we just entered into with our visualization. We're practicing the feeling and noticing where the resistance is, breathing into it, getting curious about where we've been forcing, where we felt the need to control, and coming back into the experience of flow. So it's an exercise of noticing, where's your energy flowing, and coming back to the flow state. So when you're ready, I invite you to pick up your brush, pick up your water, and just immerse your paintbrush into your water. Just maybe stirring around and connecting to the qualities, the, the lightness, the flowing, the fluidity. The water kind of flows as you stir goes with the flow of what's going on around it. Yet at the same time, it's still water. And when you're ready, you're gonna take your brush and you're simply going to begin to paint your watercolor paper with the water. Just continuing to dip your brush into the water, really staying mindful to the qualities of the flowing water onto the page. And just imagining that with this water, we are, we are enlivening and bringing life and nourishment to the page. There's some freedom in simply painting the page in water without color pigment. Kind of like warms us up to letting go of the need to control or feel like we're gonna make a mistake. And for this exercise today, we want to really make sure that the paper is, is fully immersed in water. So anytime today, as we're in, engaging in this, that you notice that your page is starting to dry, you're gonna just dry off your brush and also get some paper towel out and, um, and re-wet re -wet your brush and re-wet the page. This is also an opportunity to bring your, your presence and your gratitude for the water in your life. You know, without water, we wouldn't have life. We wouldn't have health, we wouldn't have nourishment. We often don't take enough time to be grateful for the simple things such as water. Now may be a time where you put on your playlist if you haven't done that yet. And see what that feels like to paint the water onto your page with the flow of the music. 
See if you can tune into the rhythm and the flow of the music as you glide your brush across the page. And when you're ready, I invite you to, to notice your color palette and notice what colors are bringing you a little pull. Where's the flow bringing you? Is it the cool colors? Is it the warm colors? A mixture of light and dark. What I'd like you to do is you're simply taking your brush and you are allowing quite a bit of water to be placed onto the colors of your choice. Really allowing colors themselves to be immersed with the water. Really breathing life into the color. Let them soak for a moment. The more water you have on your watercolors, the more vibrant the colors will be on your page. So this is also a practice in patience. And when you feel your brush is, has really drank in the color, we are simply now, as a child, gonna be curious and playful about what's gonna happen when we drop this color into the water-soaked paper. So you're going to take your brush and start to invite the color onto the paper. And if your paper has, in the meantime, dried, you're going to grab quite a bit more water and soak the area. And I just want you to take some time now and just breathe into the, the color is going to start to ripple out into the page as a river does from the ocean into the body of the earth. Really just tuning into that metaphor of the river and the spreading out. And just practicing, trusting that you have no idea where this color is going to go. But you also don't have a need to control it either. You're simply curious as to what's going to happen. And continue wetting your page. And when you're ready, you're going to invite in other colors, if they call to you. You may stay with one color, who knows? If you do invite another color in, notice in your physiology what that other color feels like in your body. Notice if it connects to any emotions within you. Notice if you like it or if you don't like it. And if you are painting it near the color you painted previously. Notice what happens if the colors blend together and what comes up in you. Notice if it feels messy or if it feels beautiful. Or you might even realize you have a dual awareness and you're experiencing both discomfort, chaos, and beauty. Often that's our natural state in life, isn't it? So you're just taking a few moments and again, continuing to soak your page and finding enjoyment and pleasure in the process, being playful. Allowing this to be abstract doesn't have to take a form that you recognize. So really starting to enter into that intuitive flow state where you follow your own sense of beauty. And you may even allow yourself to curl up the edges of your mouth and be amused that you're being playful today. Who knows, for some of us, maybe you haven't played with watercolors for a lifetime. So remember, this is not about finishing. When you feel like this part is done, what I'm gonna invite you to do is put away your colors. Now, if you have watercolor pencils or watercolor crayons for an extra level of fun and enjoyment, what I'd like you to do is you're gonna take your water again, you rinse your brush, and again, cover what you've painted 
with water, bringing nourishment and luminescence to what you've created. And if you do have the watercolor pencils or the crayons, just choosing the colors that are calling to you. And what I'd like you to do now is allow these materials to glide over, over the colors you've already created, come into relationship with the wet page. It's gonna feel very smooth and very flowing. And I'd like you just to allow your body now to express this sense of flow. What does flow feel like? Again, it doesn't have to look like anything. It's just being playful and really embodying this experience, this essence of flow. What does flow feel like? If the materials are feeling resistant, again, bringing more water. After you have painted and you have used your materials to express flow, you may again Take your water and your brush and trace the shapes that you did. And what's gonna happen is they're gonna blend even more. Again, in the past you may have been taught that this looks messy. But for our purposes today, we are honoring the beauty of flow and our inability to control. and recognizing what we do have control over and allowing that to be enough. Because the truth is in life, there is only truly so much that we have control over. We have control over the choices that we make, such as the materials we're gonna use, the colors we're gonna use. We have control over how we're reacting to the choices that we made, how we're reacting to what's happening in front of us. We're taking responsibility for being present to how we feel. But beyond that in life, most things we really truly have no control over. So my hope is that through this process, you can start to understand the importance of learning how to connect to the natural flow of your life so that you aren't living your life in a current state of judgment or stress or resentment or anger we're really allowing our emotions space to be able to move through us and we're staying aware and present to all of it. When you feel like your creation is done, what I'd like you to do is put it aside. You are going to clean up your space, dump out your water, rinse your brush, put all your materials away. And then we're gonna come back to your creation. So I'm gonna have you just sit with your creation in front of you and just see if a title or phrase comes to you and just write this somewhere on the page. You could write it with the watercolor pencil or you could wait till it dries and write it on the back. Um, just what does it remind you of? And then what I'd like you to do is place this creation about three to five feet away from you. So for me, I often place them in a chair or a couch set out from me or on my bureau and I engage in another level of connection with what I've created. And so now we're gonna revisit the theme of flow in our lives as we look at our creation. And we're going to reflect for ourselves internally. You could also journal with this process. Really reflect on if that experience was comfortable or uncomfortable. Is it easy or hard for you now that you've had this experience? to be in the flow state or are there places where it's just really uncomfortable? Do you have a sense, you know, maybe this is a doorway, you know, maybe you engage in this again, you could do this every day, or maybe it's a doorway into you realizing it's super important to find activities that bring you pleasure every day, even if they're really simple and really, you know, taking some action steps after this practice today to incorporate those into your daily life. If you like your creation, you can hang it up. You can use this as an anchor to remind you of the experience of being in flow, or you can just cut off a piece maybe that, um, that speaks to you or cut it in a shape that, that feels right to you and hang that up. 
and allow that to be the visual anchor to remind you of the experience of flow. But ultimately, my hope for you is that moving forward, you find ways not only to remember this feeling state, but to grow the experience of flow in your own life. You know, life, our journey is like a river. It, it pulls us in a direction and we can, we can flow with the current or we can fight the current. We can learn how to build a raft. Our creativity is an amazing tool. So just take a moment and breathe into flow. And for the rest of your day today, practice opening and surrendering and growing comfort with that and trusting that this could be your natural state of being. I'd like to thank you so much for joining us today for this artful healing, creative meditation practice. And I look forward to creating with you again on the third Monday of next month. May you all be in flow. See you next time. I hope you have enjoyed today's Artful Healing program. And I invite you to spend the last week of this month journaling your wellness practice. I also encourage you to visit or revisit our previous month's programs, Artful Movements and Artful Meditation. Both can be found on the museum website and Facebook page. Be sure to like and follow us on all of our social media accounts at Colby Museum and visit us on our website, colby.edu forward slash museum to stay updated on all upcoming events, programs, and so much more. Like always, from our museum home to yours, take care and I will see you next month for another Artful Healing.